Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about C Sharp methods. C Sharp methods are different than I thought they were, and I've been using C Sharp for a long time. And maybe you never need to really think about how C Sharp methods work, but I want to talk about it. Before we get started, I do want to just tell you about a new course I have. It's going to be a live full day course on .NET Aspire. It's going to be on June 12th, and you can register now. In fact, you can use this coupon code that's here on the screen to get 20% off. Let's get started. So I'm in Visual Studio Code. I just have a straight up C Sharp class here. And this is just a console app. And if I wanted to go ahead and let's say get a result of a new maths object, and I wanted to just write out to the console maths.add, let's say two plus three, right? Super simple. Everyone's done this sort of thing. In fact, if we run this, it's going to give us that magic five out, right? And I got to thinking, what the heck is this? What is this, what we call methods? This isn't a function, really. And because I've been doing a lot of JavaScript and TypeScript, it really got me to think about our functions first class objects in C Sharp. It's an important idea here because in other languages where functions are just another data type, they can be passed around and manipulated and changed and all those things. But C Sharp really doesn't have that concept. In fact, this method isn't an object. It doesn't have a type. But when we start to think about how we're using this, you may think there are a bunch of times when we're absolutely treating this like an object. So what if we were to create an add function and just assign it maths.add? And what the heck is this? This ends up being a function. In fact, if we turn pop-ups on, we can see that when we float over the function, it's gonna tell us it's a func of int, int, int. Now this func class, which if you haven't dealt with before, is a little weird. It's a generic class that represents a wrapper around that method. The method itself isn't an object of any sort, but when we try to add it to something, the compiler goes, you know what, you want access to this add, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around what we call a function. What does that mean? I can now just say add function here, and this will continue to work. And if I go ahead and just say and run to run our app, we can see we're still getting five out of there because it's treating this like it is an actual object. It's a reference to this function. And what's interesting about this is we have a couple of different ideas about what this actually is. So let's fully type this. And what do these three mean? The first parameter of a func is the return value. Because this returns an int, our func needs that as the first value. So every func, even if it doesn't have parameters, has to have that first parameter of the func. And what are the other ones? The other ones are all of the parameters and their types. It doesn't need to know their name, it just needs to know their types. Because all we're doing here is using it and knowing the types we're passing in. We don't need ne necessarily to know about the actual integers. So we can use that add, but what about creating our own? Like let's say do addition and we could say new func bool and what we can put inside of it is what we're calling a lambda. This is going to be some piece of code that does something like true. It's going to return true. Now this seems very confusing but effectively what this is is we don't need this. It'll be typed for us is a tiny little function. This is a set of parameters here, just like we have here. This is telling it that it is a anonymous function, a nameless function or lambda. And then this is a single line saying what it's gonna do. And this will effectively say return this because we wanna return it. And if we look at it, we can see that it's a func bool, just like we thought. But because this is just a function, right? We can make it a multi-line function as well. Remember that this is just a method and a body of that method just like this. And so let's actually use it to return something. If our maths.add, let's say six and six equals 12, we'll go ahead and return it and just say right line, do addition and execute it like a function. Now remember that this doesn't have any parameters, so I don't need to supply any here. I'm saying when you execute this, run this code. That's an important idea here. And so obviously if we save this, we're gonna get five and then true right? It does equal 12. And this is an important idea in the way we actually want to do this. If you've been using C Sharp for a little while, you've probably had to use these lambdas. And to know exactly what they are, I think is important because behind the scenes are these funks and something else called an action. Now, what's the difference between an action and a function? So let's say do action. This action is a class called action. And that means I can call do action, but if I try to capture the output, it's going to complain because actions don't have a return type. The difference between an action and a func is whether it has a return value or not. 
That's the only difference. So let's say I wanted to give this, let's say string foo. I'm gonna pass in foo, and I'm just gonna write out to the console this string. It's gonna complain because our action here, which of course if we had inferred it, would do the right thing, but it's gonna need a parameter for string. In an action, all of the generic parameters are the types that you're gonna use in the actual parameters. And you'll notice a couple things. If I take this back to a var, and let me give it something so we get rid of that error, this ends up being the same thing as we expected. Of course, it has the nullable because I'm using nullable reference types, but it's effectively that action. And so if we take this off, it's not gonna work unless it knows what those parameter types are. So let's go back to action string. And what happens, this parameter is assumed to be a string because this is the data type. So you can infer on either side of that. You can infer the different types you want to be looking at. And so getting your head around all of this, like I don't think I've, until this demo, have ever written func or action because this is the more obvious way to do that. So would this be any different if this were static. We get some things breaking here, but of course if we change it to the static method, we get that same relationship, right? The add method continues to be just a func. It doesn't care because essentially on this class, there's only going to be one representation of a pointer to some code to execute. If this isn't static, we aren't gonna get add over and over and over again. It's much more about the semantics of how you want to add it. And this is not true for something like JavaScript that has first class functions. It's very easy to make a mistake in JavaScript JavaScript or TypeScript end up having an add method on each and every object because it's just a piece of data you're adding. So be aware of that, but C Sharp doesn't care. C Sharp knows that a method is a method is a method, and if you want to get access to it to pass it in or whatever, it's going to be cast into a func of some sort or a action of some sort. So what you'll see in the API is quite a lot. Let's go ahead and create a new method down here called public static bool run this. And I'm gonna tell it, you know what? I wanna have a func that returns a bool. This is gonna be my operation. In this case, I'm gonna just return operation execute, right? Because I know the type of this and I can pass it without parameters, I can do that. And what you're gonna see a lot in C Sharp and the .NET framework is cases where you're gonna go and you're gonna pass in one of these functions or actions as a parameter. This is super, super common where you're going to pass in, why don't you go collect these and do this later? And the reason why this pattern ends up being pretty powerful is you can defer con things like configuration. You can see this a lot in configuration where you go, I want to run this and then some later part gets a copy of our maths and tells it to execute that. You can defer it because you're passing in not the setting, but the function that returns the kind of setting you want. C Sharp doesn't have true first class methods, whether they be functions or actions, but they do have these wrappers that you can use. And in fact, we can take an extension of these lambdas, or I like how uh, JavaScript calls them arrow functions because there's an arrow here. And in many cases, we can actually use an expression syntax to simplify our classes. So here, if this really is all it's doing. Then I can define my methods by just using the arrow and saying what it actually does. This is no different. The compiler is going to treat it the same, but this can be very interesting because it's simple. Notice we don't have a return here because it assumes that what we're going to do here is return this value. We don't need to for a single line lambda, but as soon as you break it up like we did here into a multi-line, you're going to have multiple things executed and it's going to want to, and you're going to have to specify what you want to return. So there is a difference between a one-line lambda and a multi-line lambda. So my goal for this is to really just get your head around method as an object that you can pass around. Even though we don't have first class functions in the language, we do have the ability to treat code as objects. Because of these func and action classes, we can wrap our methods in that way. And we can define anonymous methods or lambdas in a way to help us create more interesting parts of code. Often it's much more interesting to be able to return data that you want or to be able to ask someone to pass in some code that you want to execute. One of the places I'll do this sometimes is for cleanup code. So if I have a repository that's getting data, I'll have that data retrieved and then have some lambda that I want it to execute afterwards for doing things like computing IDs or other things that aren't straightforward database driven. It can be a really useful idea for passing in some code that is executed in a way that the user of your API can actually use that. I hope that makes sense.
So this has been kind of a short coding short, but I want to do a couple of these every once in a while that really cover some of the basic intrinsic types about the language. I think it's very easy to get caught up in the day to day of working with the framework, not necessarily the language. And this is one of those peculiar places that for me helped me just cement what different objects in the code really mean, even though they aren't necessarily going to change the way I write code every day. Me having a better idea of how methods work and what methods really are that goes together with understanding how the GC is reference types versus value types, all sorts of different things helps me really understand the code I'm writing every day and not just taking the same coding pattern, putting it in and hope it works. Well, if you've gotten this far, I'd love a like, subscribe, all that really helped. I want to thank each and every one of you. We reached 15,000 subscribers this week. That's a nice little benchmark for me. It shows that the kind of videos I'm making are reaching the right people and we're gaining some traction and that's all I could really hope for. Until next time, my name is Sean Wildermuth and this has been Coding Shorts.